years. Speaking of no religious oh. affiliation, oh. a guy that not only doesn't believe in God, he doesn't believe in Santa Claus, yeah. the Easter Bunny, he, he slanders the Tooth Fairy, uh, he Public believes here. little kittens and daffodils are bad things okay. for America's Enough. future. Jim Van Dyke with Politico. And I you saw him kicking him? a puppy at DuPont Circle yesterday. I did, too. You, did you see that? Yes. Well, you know what? Actually, it was on the hill, so he must have kicked two puppies oh, yesterday. It's up there. Jim, how's that for an introduction? Good morning. <laughs> and a good morning to all yeah. of you. <laughs> <laughs> see how we welcome our guests, Jim? We love you. Jim, let's talk about your big piece this morning. You and Mike Allen have written one a lot of people are going to be talking about today, The Romney Family Rebellion. Tell us what happened. Yeah, I think it's a pretty interesting look in what's happened behind the scenes in the Romney campaign over the last two to three weeks. And what you've seen is really the family asserting itself with Mitt Romney, particularly Ann Romney and Tag Romney, uh, both being very vocal internally about changing the strategy, softening his image, uh, projecting a more uh, moderate image, particularly in the debate. And since then, and I think the victim in all this would be Stuart Stevens, who had been the chief strategist uh, from the beginning. And uh, several campaign officials told us he's now been fenced in. He's basically just doing ads. He's not doing a lot of the grand strategy. Uh, that's been turned over to people like Tag Romney uh, and Ed Gillespie, who's been with the campaign for some time now, was brought in a couple months ago, has lots of ties to the, to the Bush world, a real veteran <coughs> at this stuff. And, they, and that's the reason you have a different strategy today. Well, you know, it's, it's great. Who knows Mitt Romney better than the family? Mm. And it's great that, you know, there doesn't have to be a loser here. It doesn't have maybe, um, we'll find out afterwards exactly what's happening for Stuart and everybody else. But who knows Mitt Romney, Willie, better than Mitt and Tag and the family who know him and love him? We've always said he's a great guy, great father, great man. And... I actually and a better I, candidate today. I think he's a much better candidate today, and I think him tacking a little bit to the middle, at least rhetorically, I, I think that helped him a lot. They thought he'd been mishandled up until about a couple of weeks ago. But Jim, how has this manifested itself mm -hmm. since uh, that first debate? If this intervention took place just beforehand, right. is he really different out on the stump? Yeah, I mean, that's where I have to inject a couple notes of caution. Yeah. One, he's not been a good candidate uh, in totality. He's had a good week. Before this, most Republicans thought he was running a pretty bad campaign. And until two weeks ago, he rejected his own family's advice to soften his image. He was with Stuart Stevens, and he thought he had to keep all of the focus on Barack Obama. So he is a reluctant a participant in this new strategy and it forces him to improvise and throughout his political career when he <clears throat> improvises he often veers into a danger zone so the question is can he successfully improvise and sort of be himself because I know I'll get tons of angry emails I think what you've seen the last week is more where he really would be when it comes to governing I think he's had to do a lot of things he's had to pretend <clears throat> in a way that's really damaged his image and damaged his uh, credibility he's had to pretend to get conservatives excited now conservatives are so frustrated with the campaign that they'll take anything. They'll even take a moderate mitt. So he has extreme flexibility uh, for the next couple of weeks, and he has to seize the moment. Well, i got to tell you, uh, I was excited, uh, Mika, during the debate of two things I saw. One, him focusing on how he was bipartisan, how he got things done in Massachusetts, how he'd made, meet with Democratic leaders every Monday morning. Mm -hmm. I love that. And I'll tell you, Americans love that. I think it was They're effective. hungry for that. And I'm so glad he did it. That's one. And two, I loved it. I said it yesterday. I will say it today. I loved him saying, I will not cut a tax that will raise the national deficit. Now, everybody can obsess on his 87-point uh, plan, yeah. and everybody can obsess on what he said during the primaries, yeah. but that sent a message to me, Jim Van de High, Of a philosophy. That a philosophy, a moderate philosophy, a conservative with a small c philosophy, that I'm not gonna be a crazy ideologue, I'm not gonna slash first and ask questions mm -hmm. later, I'm mindful that we live in a global, on a global stage where investors are scared to death that the U.S. is going to sink deeper in debt. He's striking the, I mean, he's striking the right tone for me. I know he's striking the right tone now for a lot of Americans. I, I don't think you can overstate the importance of that new tone. Right, and if he were to win, and I still think it's a big if, 
Uh, he would have a lot of flexibility, I think, to do what you were talking about three or four minutes ago on the show, which is do a global deal that positions the United States to really sort of take advantage of this global slowdown. We have a piece up today where we have Jamie Dimon, Lloyd Blankfield, other people on the record saying, you know what, we will accept a higher taxes if that's what it takes to get a deal. It's so important to get deficits under control, to get the tax code reformed, even if it's reformed slightly, and to get government uh, better balanced. And it's clear there's going to be a ton of support to do it. Mitt Romney has this 200-day plan that they've been working on. It very much includes something like Simpson Bowles getting signed into law in the first 100 days so they can get the economy uh, back on track. And I think that'll be a big debate. All right, Jim Ben. I, I, I like to say, well, just like yeah. I said nothing about raising taxes. Uh, I just said don't raise okay. the deficit with well, Can I just tell you one other thing Mike Allen sent me, Willie? Sure. Mm, no. Yesterday. Well, you, Willie, I don't uh, want to see your pictures. So, I as mean, if criticism it's a over of our pictures, situation. I don't want to see it. <laughs> Sugary sodas, intensifies Coke, Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper are rolling out new vending machines that will put calorie counts right at your fingertips. It's a move in the right direction. Thank you, Mike Allen, for sending that to me. We need to get that in the show as well sometime today. We also need to talk about the campaign Did put in, in Massachusetts. In drink, Elizabeth Warren and Scott Brown, that's getting fascinating. Getting it done. Joe's filibustering. Jim Vandehei, thanks in. so much. Jim and Mike's piece up the Romney Rebellion. We love sugar. You See ought you. to read it, Politico.com. <laughs> thanks, Jim. When we come back, the Jets try to survive a showdown with the Texans on Monday Night Football. Mark how did, how Sanchez, did that he had a chance, one drive, to win it all and turn around the season. Tebow. I'll show you how he did. Plus, Tebow. as we told you, Orioles, Yankees, full highlights when we come back.